Hello, this is Daryl Castle with today's podcast. Today is Friday, July 29th, 2016. And on today's podcast, we're going to discuss the Constitution Party and where we go from here. In many ways, the Constitution Party is a mirror of America, which was founded by people with a youthful, energetic attitude. Those were people who left stagnant, oppressive Europe to create a life for themselves in a new world. They wanted to be free to choose their own pursuit of happiness. That freedom allowed them to carve a nation out of a wilderness, a nation based on principles that allowed the most prosperity for the most people in history. Today, America doesn't seem so young anymore. We seem older, more fearful, less willing to explore, to risk danger. Even the young are frightened of the future, which seems to hold grim economic realities for them. There is an attitude of pessimism rather than optimism, and that is very un-American. We as Americans have always been optimistic, especially about our children's future, which we always have expected to be brighter than our own, but now a majority of parents say they don't expect their children to do as well economically as they have done. What has caused this change of attitude in America? comparison of America's founding with that of the Constitution Party may seem like a stretch, but there are many similarities. When Howard Phillips wanted to start a new political party, he did it because life in the Republican Party was stagnant and oppressive for him. He recruited the rest of us, and we launched the party with a youthful belief that we would prevail and eventually supplant the Republican Party. Today, however, Many of us in the Constitution Party don't seem so young anymore. I'm not just talking about those who are no longer young in age, but I also mean those who are no longer young at heart. There are 25-year-olds with old attitudes toward life. They seem unexcited about being alive, unexcited about the future. And there are plenty of 85-year-olds who look at each day as an exciting gift from God. In terms of the Constitution Party, then what is the difference? I submit that the difference is a vision of victory. When we started the party, we all believed that success was possible. So we committed our lives to the project. We all worked hard. We gave our money. We raised money. We recruited new members. Now it seems that we have lost that vision of victory that we originally had. In other words, many of us no longer believe that victory is possible. Howard used to tell us that to achieve victory, first you must seek it. Today, I think some of us have lost sight of the belief that victory is something we are seeking. When that happens, people just go through the motions of what they are required to do without any real enthusiasm or effort. The audiences that I speak to sometimes remind me of some of the churches I've been in where members have been in service to the church for so long they just want to sit and let somebody else do it for the rest of their lives. The irony is that this election cycle presents us with the greatest opportunity in the history of the Constitution Party and in perhaps in history, period. The Democrats and Republicans have handed us the chance we've been waiting for for 24 years. There are so many dissatisfied people that many people who previously would not give us the time of day are coming our way. People sense that something is desperately wrong in this country. Perhaps they understand that they may be living in the declining empire era of American history. If you use ancient Rome as an example, you should be able to see the pattern. Rome started out as a monarchy, and it evolved into a republic just as America did. After many years, the Roman Republic degenerated to the point where strong Caesars took control, and the republic became an empire. Some might say that has happened in America as well. The Roman Empire flourished for a while, then began to decay due to poor leadership, which debased the currency and misused the army. Eventually, the decadence and decay led to the fall of Rome and conquest by barbarian tribes. Sound familiar? The point is that it doesn't have to be this way. We can save the republic if we all work together, but it will take all of us. The growing enthusiasm for this campaign is being fueled by those who previously supported the campaign of Ted Cruz and who still would. If he were in the race, I believe they see 
similar positions in me and in Senator Cruz together. With some libertarians who once supported Austin Peterson, they have energized and fueled this campaign with a youthful energy that I was afraid had been lost. These people have convinced me that we can actually win, and they have shown me the vision of how it can be done. Notice I said we, because I can't do it. I can't do it, but together, we can. If we don't win the election, we can build a conservative coalition that will be a permanent force in American politics right now. Ballot access in sufficient states hangs in the balance. I need all those Constitution Party people who have thus far done nothing to help to come out and help us. We need your money and your time. Many say they can't give anything, but everyone can give something. Everyone can get a few signatures. Just do what you can to help those of us who are trying to save the Republic. Finally, folks, we can have a truly 10th Amendment presidency if we all work together. That would be a sweet day of freedom in America, whether it comes in this election or the next. Get the vision of victory that many of us have and help us before it's too late. Don't squander this opportunity to make this party a national force. I offer my deepest gratitude to all those cruisers, libertarians, and paulers who are carrying us on their backs along the way to victory. You have been faithful with money, with time, with talent. I appreciate you more than words can say. At least that's the way I see it. Till next time, folks, this is Daryl Castle. Thanks for listening.